Pao Tong from University of International Business and Economics. So, Professor Liu, thank you for coming with us. Sure. Well, Real Time China is a special program of CTTN to mark the 40th anniversary of China's reform and opening up. So, we'd like to show you a panoramic view of China and also what is really happening in China. So, we are on a 10 day trip to tour the cities that have played a crucial role uh, in the China's reform and opening up process. So, we started from Beijing and we'll go all the way down to South China. provinces Hebei and Henan. So in these two provinces we will set foot on seven cities and towns and we'll go eventually our final destination is Zhengzhou. There now we are arriving at Xinhai province, uh, Xinhai city in Hebei province. So Professor you are from here. Tell us a little bit about Xinhai. Well uh, Xinhai is uh, has been a rural area for uh, thousands of years and now uh, during the reform process it turned out to be a major uh, place for uh, some of the raw materials, uh, for, uh, particularly for the building stuff, for example the glass, cement, and uh, uh, other accessories. So right now, Xintai is struggling between modernization uh, versus environmental protection. And uh, uh, now they have to really find a very difficult balance because uh, there has been a momentum that people invested a lot and they continue wanted to produce uh, you know, those materials that are under tougher environmental standard and also under uh, declining market demand. So the other is, okay, the uh, government and also the community here I wanted to clean their air, cleaner water, and cleaner soil. So I think the solution is uh, uh, painful, but uh, it is a uh, necessary step. Uh, one is that okay, they have to raise the bar for uh, environmental standard in the entire manufacturing process. The other, the other, they have to cope with the supply side reform that is conducted nationally to reduce the unnecessary capacity. And uh, then they have to uh, transform certain production capacity into a higher end. For example, instead of making simply the normal building glasses, they can really uh, make like uh, glasses uh, used for the cars and uh, used even for medical purposes, for aerospace purposes, etc. Of course, that demands new technology that has to be uh, introduced in new process. Uh, but uh, this is a really a necessary one if they really wanted to survive and maintain their competitiveness. And then, you know, the, the other is that uh, they have to uh, uh, find new customers uh, uh, because that would be a uh, different marketing channel, that would be different messages. So uh, simply say, okay, uh, my stuff is uh, cheaper. My stuff, uh, you know, can be made in a lot in quality. That won't work anymore. Yeah, we know that Xinhai glass making is the major industry here in Xinhai, but it's not environmental, environmental friendly. And Xinhai is known for one of the uh, the, the, the most important, the most uh, British pollution area in China. But the, the China has made a lot of uh, changes to promote uh, the transformation of industry and the structural adjustments. They do have to cover the current situation a little bit, but uh, the, it's not big enough. So speaking of urban transformation, uh, there's one province in China, Guanan province, which is also our final destination for today. They have a very successful representative. So Sanmen Xia, do you know that area? Yeah, very much. They, uh, they have the uh, hydraulic power uh, that, that is there to support uh, the cleaner energy and uh, also they have uh, a major turnaround in their uh, industrial structure and so uh, from a very depressed place now uh, people uh, see 
idea of prosperity, and then they shifted onto certain new industries that are uh, welcomed by the marketplace, and GDP is also getting healthier and stronger. Yes, so Sun Wenxia uh, has poured itself into the protection of its wetland resources because it, it has over 3,000 rivers in the city belonging to the two main water systems, Huanghe, Huanghe River and Yanzi River. So we actually have a reporter there at uh, Sun Wenxia. Uh, there are, every winter there are thousands of white swans flying here for winter from the remote Siber Siberian. So let's go to our reporter there, Li Jianhua. Uh, to see more details what it's really looked like in Samenxia. Welcome to this special of CGTN and this is called the Real China. We have just started a mammoth trip that started from the country's capital Beijing to the very southern and coastal Chinese city of Shenzhen, which is also the frontier of China's reform and opening up 40 years ago. And China's reform and opening up almost four decades and it's been a mystery for many countries and I believe that for many of viewers around the globe that they think they definitely want to know what's really happened in China over the past four decades. And today I'm in central Chinese city of Samenxia, which is well known for its white swans. And every year in October, thousands of white swans will fly all the way from Siberia or Mongolia to this part of China. And today we're going to focus on the white swans. If you are a bird lover or if you're very much interested in white swans, definitely stay tuned. And today we're going to focus on the white swans. And if you want to know anything about these birds, definitely leave your comments on Facebook, Twitter and Weibo. Also, you can find us on CGTN website. And of course, today I'm joined by an expert, also a photographer, of white swans and I'm joined by Mr. Wang Hongwei who is a photographer here. So, so Mr. Wang, um, I'm so honored to be joined by you today and would you like to say hi to our viewers around the world? Uh -huh. So he is working in the local railway station, but unfortunately he doesn't speak English. So in the meantime, as he speaks, I'm going to translate for him. Okay, so today we're going to talk about white swans. And as I talk, I'm going to move all the way to the pond. We're going to see tons of here, tons of them here. So today we have four, nearly 4,000 of them in this very central Chinese city of Samenxia. And besides me, one is an expert in white swan, also a photographer. So if you have any questions, please leave your comments down below on Facebook, Twitter. Okay, okay. okay. So many of us actually are very curious about why the swans and their nature and everything because they are birds and they travel all the way from north of the, uh, the globe, from Mongolia, also from Siberia to this part of China. But, but why? So I'm going to ask this question. I think most of our viewers are very curious about it. Wang 老师, 您能说一下这个天鹅, 它有什么样的习性, 它每年的话, 我们这边的天鹅是从西伯利亚和蒙古这边迁到这儿来的, 然后它有什么样的习性, 能给我们介绍一下吗? 这个天鹅明年从西伯利亚和蒙古这边迁到这儿来的, Okay, so every year, 10,000 of white swans will move all the way from Siberia and Mongolia to this part of this country. And we have three routes, and the middle one. So some of the uh, white swans actually would go to Urumqi in northwest China, and some of them would come here. So the number of white swans in the central Chinese city of Samenxia accounts for two-thirds of the population in this country. So now you can see some of the white swans. Now they are currently fishing fruit in this very small pond in the city. Okay, so um, I would like to ask this question. Most of them actually would fly like 2,000 or 3,000 
kilometers kilometers from Siberia to Mongolia. And then, so how long it would take them to get here? That 多长时间能够迁徙过来？他这个前期途中大概在一个月时间，嗯，中间停留两次。It usually would take them like a month, actually, from Siberia or Mongolia to this part of China, or two months, and then they would take probably some stops to get here. It's around two thousand or three thousand kilometers. How this long trip is? How long is the distance? Two thousand three hundred kilometers. Two thousand three hundred. Okay, sorry, it is not two or three thousand kilometers. It's around four thousand. So it would take them like two months to get here. About two months, two months, two months. 嗯，前期途中就是一个月吧，一个月时间，在我们这个地方停留四个月。Okay, so it's gonna be like one month for them to get here, and they gonna stay here about four month, and they would arrive here in October. 他们十月份来吧。十月下旬，十月下旬开始从那边迁到这边就一个月时间。Okay, so at the end of October they would come here. So let's give them. Some closer. Let's give you a closer look at the white swans.、So、they usually come to this part of China in late October. You can see thousands of coming here. So when do they leave? They leave. Um, from August to August, from August to August, from August to August, from August to August. Okay. So around March, the beginning of March, and they're gonna at the beginning of March, they're gonna leave here, and they are going back to their hometown, Siberia or Mongolia. So,、uh, one, can you talk about some of the natures that most of the viewers are very much interested about about white swans? Can you talk about some of the natures that most of the viewers are very much interested about about white swans? Can you talk about some of the natures that most of the viewers are very much interested about about white swans? Can you talk about some of the natures 但是像这个鸟类，这个像天鹅，这个它这个地域性很强、嗯。一般它下来以后，就说它自己，其他鸟不允许其他鸟类靠近，所以说它就会出现一些嬉戏打闹的场面。另外就是每年它在这个地方求偶。啊、uh、哈 -huh. ，So they usually live in groups, and usually the family, usually four or five of them, would come to this part together. And now we can see a lot of them are fishing for food. Yeah, because the local authorities now are protecting them, providing them with their very safe environment, and they just affect these birds here. And usually, they would do their ritual ceremonies and everything here around this time. And by the、uh, the beginning, by the beginning of March, they usually they would go back to their hometowns. Okay. 王老师，他这个你看这个天鹅有很多，他这个您能判断出来哪些是一家的吗 ？Can you tell like、uh, you, you they usually live as a family, right? As a family units, units. So can you tell like which one is a family? 对，一般你可以看那个水里面，水里面如果说要是有两只白的，带了几只就是灰色的天鹅，那个就是一家，因为天鹅两年才能变白。啊哈。So usually, yeah, that is very interesting. It usually takes them around two years to turn white, and we call them white swans. But you can definitely find some of them actually are grey. If they are grey, that means they are still babies. If they are white, it means they are still babies. Ah, ah. So if they are grey, if you can see that through our cameras, if it, if you can find some grey swans, that means they are still babies and they were born this year. 就像那个，啊哈，灰灰的那个颜色，那就是当年今年才孵化出来的鹅。啊哈 ，That grey one was born to, was born this year. Can you see some grey swans? 有些灰天鹅哈。Okay. 像那只比较明显了，那个。啊哈。So if you can follow our camera and you can see some grey swans, that means they were born this year, and then it usually take them around two years to be totally white. Okay. 如果它变成了这个灰天鹅之后，它是不是要分开这个和这个家就离开了，和他父母？他还是一家，他他跟父母就是他他过来跟父母在一块儿， uh -huh. 在前期回去的时候还会一家一家走。Okay, so they came as a family, they would also leave as a family, right? 他们来的时候是一家，走的时候是也是一家。But when they leave, they would turn, they would be grown-ups. 他走的时候已经是成鸟了吧？那他因为他当年来到这儿，然后回去，明年再回来的时候，他就变白。Okay, so they would usually. So this year, some of them are still grey, and they are still young birds, and they would go back to their hometowns、uh, around March. And by the time they come back to this part of the、uh, country once again, they would be totally white. Uh, 王老师，他这个这个鸟类的话，现在还不是他求偶的季节吧 ？This is not the right season for the ritual ceremonies, right? 
，现在有，因为这个在这个湖里面，因为今天这个风大，在这湖里面，他来到三面这边，他主要求偶在这边，然后再回到这个西伯利亚和外蒙繁殖。啊啊。So they will usually find their lovers here, their partners here, around this time from October to March, and then when they find their lovers, they go back to their hometowns, and then they're gonna hatch their birds, their babies, right, in their hometowns. Uh huh. So I know that one, Mr. One, you are a photographer, professional photographer, and you have definitely something to show us here. So here I've got an expert, and he actually is a professional photographer. He works in the、uh, local railway station, and you can see some of his work. And then can talk about this picture. 您能给我们讲一下这个？您当时这这幅照片吗？这两只天鹅是在求偶。对对对对。嗯哼。So these two swans actually, they are doing the、uh, famous, a、uh, well-known ritual ceremony, right? They are in the ceremony. The ceremony is in the ceremony. They are in the ceremony. They are in the ceremony. So they were face to, they were gonna do it face to face, right? When they are doing the ritual ceremony, it's like they're kissing each other, and then they're gonna do the、uh, heart shape with the、uh, with their crane with their necks. Ah ha! Their neck is quite long. Yes, yes. This is a big bird. 这是大天鹅 ，These are like grown up birds, right? Okay, so, 嗯、uh, ，每年在这个迁徙这个天鹅中间，我们这里边也有小天鹅，啊哈，它是两个品种，啊哈。So every year, actually, some of the birds they are still young birds when they traveled all the way from Siberia to the southern Chinese city of Xiamenxia, where they were still still young, and usually they、uh, travel as a family. So I'm very curious if they travel. Like as a young bird, is it possible for them to survive this long trip? This like four thousand kilometers. It has 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 量还是不大的，就一些大多大部分还是能够活下来。因为像每年像咱走的时候，像这些天鹅，有些真的，或者在平常飞翔中间受伤，它也会留在我们这里。我们每年有常年在这有个四五十只。Yeah. So some of the birds, when they get injured during the travel, they actually would stay in the city and they don't go back to their hometowns, right? Okay. So can you talk about some other pictures you have taken? 您能再再给我们展示一下您其他的照片吗？这个就是这个六手天鹅，就咱说那个受伤那个天鹅，呃，受伤那个，它这个走不了以后，在这个地方它就孵化了一窝。就说的这个天鹅在黄河流域孵化，这是一个奇迹，这就是唯一的一窝。Okay, so some of the white swans actually, when they get injured, then they wouldn't go back to their hometowns at all. They're gonna stay here in the central Chinese city of Xiamenxia. It is quite warm actually for them, so they wouldn't go back to their hometown Siberia or Mongolia, as I said just now. 如果他是待在这儿的话，那他不回，那大多数鸟类还是要回去的，因为他们都属于迁徙的鸟。这个就是他这个这个雏鸟长大以后，它也随着这个天鹅这个群的一块飞回这个这个西伯利亚和外蒙。它这个鸟类的话，大多数的时候，如果它要是受伤了，它就不回去了，是吧？对对对，那受伤因为它走不了嘛。啊哈，那它永远就不回去了。对。Gonna stay here forever. 对对对。啊哈。So usually the birds would go back to Siberia or Mongolia in early March, but some of them actually will stay in the city for a lifetime, be especially for those who get injured. So how many of them actually would stay here around that time? When most of other white swans actually go back to their hometowns, they can have how many will stay here? Every year, three quarters of them will go back. Some will still stay here. Some will 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 stay here. Quite good actually for them to stay here. It is quite warm, and they have enough food, and they have people taking care of them, so they wouldn't go back to Siberia, as the cold place. 那他呃这个如果他要是不回去了，还挺好。大多数天鹅为什么还一直回去呢？它这是什么样的习性啊？那它应该是返回去，因为到明年这个时候这边热嘛。嗯，天气天气转热以后，它还得要回到西伯利亚和外蒙。OK。So I thought that it would be good for them to stay here even in March, but the thing is too hot for them, so they would usually 
go back to Siberia or Mongolia and they're going to hatch some new babies over there in their hometowns. Okay, so this is why they are called birds reverse. Okay, so can you talk about they are really noisy actually to be honest if you were here. 这个鸟是每天都一直在这儿都是这样叫这是他们的什么习性啊? 它这个天鹅和树成角拉把天鹅，所以说它这个就是不停的叫，它它这个叫声实际上鸟叫，我感觉它应该是它也是反映出就是它自己啊哈，一种强大吧啊哈。So it is very interesting. I think you can definitely hear it, our viewers. Like it is quite noisy, and they are also called their nickname as the trumpet swans because they are very much like trumpets. And the reason, according to Miss Wang. Is because they want to show others that they are strong and they want to protect their own territories. He wants to protect his own territories. He wants to protect his own territories. So it is not only about protecting their own territories, it's also about protecting their own babies. Right? They are wondering about in this area, in this pond. Definitely, I can't tell which family is which. 这个他们走来走去也看不出来哪哪家是哪家呀，好多。因为他这个地方在进食的时候，他就相对乱一些。但是他在那水中游的时候，你就可以看到他一一家一家非常明显。你像那一家，前面那一家。啊嗯，那个。OK。嗯。So it's very interesting if they are feeding here and then they would walk around, but ah ha, if they are swimming. If they swim in the pond, they would usually swim as a family. They are about to take flight. That's a family. So that is one, two, three, four, five. Five of them all together. Okay. So they will usually fly together. What if the uh, baby is left behind? Is it possible for them to find their babies? So they know each other quite well, of course, they are family, and they, uh, they would take care of each other. If one is left behind, they would definitely stay to find out what is going on, what, why, what is the reason that the baby is kept behind, right? That is very interesting to see those white swans. So can I talk about some other natures that these lovely birds have? Can you tell us about these birds and other natures? This bird is a very strong bird. It is a very strong bird. It is a very strong bird. Fidelity. I think that is one of the characteristics that most people know about the swans, or black swans, or white swans, or what kind of whatever swans we have in the world. And that is fidelity. That is monogamy. That is very interesting. Like many birds actually in the world, they are like the fidelity. The, the fidelity is very important in the world of birds. That is very interesting. Like many birds actually in the world, they are. 这个这个，他们的这个圈子里面还是挺重要，很多鸟类都是一夫一妻制，是吗 ？Many birds actually they follow with callous monogamy in human world. 对对对，是这样。Okay, that is very lovely. And now, would you like to show us some other pictures? 还有其他的一些照片吗？这个，啊哈。Yeah, we have some other pictures here. Very lovely. And this picture is actually. It's amazing. And when 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 did you take this picture? Actually, 这什么时候照的？这个是今年六月一个晚上拍了，就傍晚的时候。因为这个天鹅就是在这个，像在三明峡这个东西城区中间一个天鹅湖，这在世界上都是罕见。Okay, it is very rare because this pond full of white swans here. Actually, it is located in the city center. It is rare all around the world because usually white swans would stay. Okay, I'm gonna give you a closer look. Usually, white ones will usually stay away from human activity or human beings. They need to take care of their own territories, right? This bird, generally, from the city, is to avoid the city. It's a little bit because the majority of the city is away from the city. It's outside. 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 White swans in the city center, where most of the white swans actually would choose to live far away from human beings. This, many swans want to live away from human beings. Why do these swans live in the city center? Because this Siberia, this, from this year, 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 from this
就是家乡对白天鹅的保护。另外，因为我们这个聚集量比较大，这个自然的食物不够吃，政府就拿出专项资金，那就是这个给他们买一些食品，一些玉米啥了，像这样就是的。Okay, so according to one, it's mostly because of the local government. Starting 2010, the local government has already put forward some regulations, and they have stepped up the uh, measures to protect these white swans. And that is one of the reasons, also the main reason, why most of them actually will stay here. So it is very lovely. You can see like some of the white swans now. They are necking against each other. What what is going on over there? They are fighting. Yes, yes, yes. This is because of the land division. Okay. So these ones actually they are necking against each other because they want their own territories. So they are actually very fierce animals. This white swan is a very fierce animal. Yes, because it is a large swan. It is very fierce. The weight of the white swan is about 10,000 kilos. Okay. 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 Okay, so they are usually they are big birds, right? And they are around like ten kilograms for each single, for each individual of them, right? So they are usually quite fierce. And they would like to protect their own territories. You can see a lot of them actually are they are attacking each other. They are actually attacking each other. Yeah, because this bird, it is mainly in the breeding season, or because of the weight. It is attacking because of the weight. It is very fierce. Yeah, the bird is very fierce. That is lovely. I think they have three to two. Someone actually throw food all over this place or the pond. So they have enough food. What is the reason that they are still attacking, attacking each other? Actually, it's only because they are protecting their territories. That is very lovely. Very good-looking birds, white swans. So usually, white swans. White swans are mostly from Siberia or Mongolia, and they are migratory birds. So, how about black swans? I see definitely some black swans in some parts of China, but very rare. This black swan, they are all migratory birds from Siberia. But some are also black swans. Black swans are more rare, right? Oh, black swans. This black swan in the black swan group, we have not found in this area. This is what we have found in the hole in the ground. So I see some black swans here, but probably very few of them. I see probably two or three of them, but they were actually kept in captivity. Most of them are still wild. And if you can see that through our camera, you can see some black birds over there, like around over there. Let's give a closer look. Now, 看到一些那个黑色的鸟类 Okay. So what what is that? 真的看见黑色的鸟类是什么呀？那是那是固定鸡，啊哈，哦，它是其他鸟类，固定鸡，这个是六鸟，人家这个地方都有。Okay, so they are actually native here. Those were the blackbirds, if you can see that, and then you, they usually live around these white swans, and they are here all year round. 它每年都在这边和这个天鹅生活在一起 ，and it is very interesting because the white swans they would usually attack each other to protect their own territories or their babies. Their family, food, and everything, but the thing they don't attack those black birds. But he, this black swan, they attack each other, but they don't attack the black birds. Because he, I think he's too big. The black swan doesn't have any need to attack him. Okay, so I see that they are very fierce. Okay, so I see that they are very fierce. Okay, so I see that they are very fierce. Okay, so I see that they are very fierce. Okay, so I see that they are very fierce. Okay, so I see that they are very fierce. Okay, so I see that they are very fierce. Okay, so I see that they are very fierce. Okay, so I see that they are very fierce. And now they have enough food. I know on land. of them are still in the water. Okay, so mostly the white swans would feed on the plantkins or some of the plants in the water, and because of the so many, so many of them, now we have around four thousand white swans in this city, and the local governments have already provided some free food for them to keep them here. And the number of white swans in the central Chinese city of Xiamenxia accounts for two thirds of the population, the birds population in this uh, in this whole country. That is a 
very lovely. And this is actually is abandoned with natural resources, including gold, bauxite, or coal. And the mining industry was very, very. This city actually was very much reliant on the、uh, mining industry, and the environment was very bad. But starting 2008, they,、uh, the government started to fine tune their development pattern to protect the environment. That's why the number of white swans now the number is increasing. Now we have around four thousands of them. 现在的话有四千多只，这个是一直属于上升的一个趋势，是吧？对对对，因为它这个，因为我们这边两个湖，那边那个湖里边也有天鹅，黄河流域也有，所以说它这个每年，它这个数量它不一定。哦哦。我们最多的时候达到六千只。Okay, so we have another lake. Then there were some white swans over there. So now it's around four thousand, but maximum the number. Reached like six thousand. That's a lot. You 六千多只应该是非常非常多的天鹅了。对，我们这是应该说是名副其实的天鹅湖。Okay, and that is why it is called the、uh, what it was a Swan Lake, right? And we have ballet dance that they call Swan Lake, and definitely this is real, the authentic Swan Lake. That is very interesting. Okay, so would you like to talk about some other natures that these birds have? 还有其他的一些习性吗？天鹅这个，它其他这个，因为它它，嗯，这咋说呀 ？Because these birds, uh, fidelity is very important for these birds. 但这些这些鸟类的话，就是我们所说的，这忠贞还是挺重要的。If a person dies, 如果有一个鸟类还要死掉的话 ，what happens to the to the、uh, to the other one? 如果有个鸟类要死掉的话，其他的另一个鸟类会怎么办？ Will the bird find another partner? 这个鸟会再寻找一个老伴吗？嗯，这个据据这个史料记载，应该是没有。嗯嗯。因为它自己，它会一直就是这个单独生活。再一个，这天鹅这个，它是这个鸟类中间飞行最高的一种禽类，它的飞行高度可以达到八千到一万米。So the height is usually around eight thousand to ten thousand kilometers or meters. 它这个在迁徙的时候，它的飞行高度就是八千到一万米，它可以直接从那个珠穆朗玛峰上峰就直接过去。Okay, so they fly high, they run eight thousand meters or ten thousand meters. They could definitely fly over Himalaya, Mount Himalaya, or we call it Mount Everest or Chu Mu Lang Ma. They could fly over Mount Everest or Chu Mu Lang Ma. They could fly over Mount Everest or Chu Mu Lang Ma. They could fly over Mount Everest or Chu Mu Lang Ma. They could fly definitely over Mount Chu Mu Lang Ma or Mount Everest. That is very interesting. And now we have、uh, got some comments from our viewers from around the world. Thomas Crossland says greetings from America. Thank you very much, Thomas. And definitely, if you are interested, come over to this part of China, the central Chinese city of. Samanxia. It is、uh, renowned for its white swans and also called the、uh, city of white swans. For those who just tuned in, this is CGTN. We are broadcasting live, and this series is called the Real Time China. We just started a mammoth trip from the capital, from China's capital Beijing, to the coastal city of Shenzhen, which also the frontier of China's reform and opening up. And today I'm joined by Mr. Wang Hongwei, who is a photographer and also an expert in swans, on white swans. If you are interested in anything, please leave your comments down below, and we'll definitely get back to your questions as soon as possible. So, Miss Wang, can you talk about? I can definitely see like some signs that these swans wear around their neck. What are they? 我能看到那个脖子，这个有的鹅的脖子上还有一些标记，这是什么？他这个他戴这个环指，戴环指主要国家这个研究人员看他每年的迁徙路线，在什么地方停留，最后迁徙到什么地方。OK， 主要是对天鹅的习性一种研究。Some of the white swans actually they're wearing something that is the sign, something like a very tiny scarf, because the government is doing some research to find out the migratory route and to make sure that these white swans will come back to. This place once again. So, okay. So, Mr. Wan has got another picture to show us, and then let's take a look. Another picture. Okay. So, I, I, I saw that this picture, and then can you tell us something about this picture once again? You can 讲一下这个这张照片。这这是您这是在哪里照的这张照片？这是在做什么？这个
这个是这个，因为这个三面是对这个加大对这个环境保护的力度以后，三面市的环境日益改善。Okay, so the environment in the city is getting much better ever since the government step up measures to protect the local environment. Okay, and、uh, what was going on? I can definitely see that this is very much like a like an art gallery. 有点像一个照片展哈。对，这个所以说这个我们作为这个这个征西高铁自二零。一零年二月六号开通以来，我们坚持在候车厅放了一个生态环境摄影。Okay, so you have an art gallery in the railway station in the waiting lounge, right, for the、uh, travelers around the world to see those white swans. So what happens after that? And then, do you think it is、uh, promoting the white swans in your city? 你认为就是我们这个影展的话，对这个保护天鹅呀，还有是。对我们这个三门峡市这个天鹅的宣传有起到什么样的作用呢？我觉得这个作为这个三面峡一个对外的重要窗口，我觉得我们有责任有义务来宣传三面的生态环境，宣传这个经济发展。所以说我们就做了这个影展，主要是想唤醒人们爱护鸟类、保护环境这种意识。So you want more people to realize the importance of protecting these wild swans, these lovely birds, right? Do you think it is working right now? 你认为这个？这现在起到作用了吗？嗯，应该作用非常大，因为这个很多旅客，因为我们过往旅客是旅客比较密集的一个场所， uh -huh. 所以说这个这个旅客看了以后，有很多人过去就是打这个鸟类了， uh -huh. 现在自己都说说是从今以后再不打鸟了。So the art gallery is quite helpful, right? And so some of the、uh, visitors around the world, when they see these pictures, and then they will say that I wouldn't do, I wouldn't shoot birds anymore. 对对对，我们就想通过高铁，把我们三万亿的白天鹅，把我们的生态环境推向全国，推向世界。So the railway station, if I go to the railway station, and then I can definitely see those pictures right now. 如果现在去的话，你能看到是吧？对对对对。Okay, that is definitely something that you have. That is a great deed that you have been doing to promote the white swans in the central Chinese city to let more people know about the white swans, the natures. And then, so can you talk about? We talk about the natures of these birds, the fidelity, and also they、uh, travel as a family, and then or some other stuff about these birds. So, how about something that they fear? These birds, the fact, are very afraid of what? You, as a professional photographer. 这个这个鸟类，除了它这个自然自然的天地以外，实际上过去因为这种意识吧，就是像那个鸟类人为的，可能造成鸟类伤害也比较大。So it's mostly about human activity, and the human activity is actually are killing these birds. 这些人类的一些行为的话，其实对这个鸟类伤害还是比较大的。主要是什么样行为伤害这个鸟类比较大？就是 what, what human activity is actually that is killing these birds. 它过去主要有一些行为叫偷猎了啥了， okay. 对。Poaching, poaching, that is one of this. The major reason for the、uh, like the、uh, decline, the declining number of these birds, 偷猎。对，过去你要你要听，过去就是的，你要在拍的时候，你会用这个长镜头。现在要拍的时候，镜头越来越短，实际上就说明问题，人与自然这种和谐，就达到这种和谐。人与自然，人与鸟类的和谐。像现在我们的距离都非常近。So now it's getting better. The poaching, yeah, and then the human activity is、uh, going down, and then we can see more of them coming over to this part of this country, right? So poaching, that is definitely one of it. And like for most of the animals, including white swans, of course, and some other wild animals. So how something else that we do probably most people don't realize that what they are doing. Actually, is killing these birds. 还有一些什么样的行为，就是人们他可能不知道，但他也会伤害到这些鸟类呢？这个我们政府现在加大这个力度，尽量的这个作为游客啥的，尽量的少给这些鸟类投食。Okay.、呃、so some visitors actually, when they come here, they would definitely feed these birds themselves. 他们是自己要投食 ，and this is definitely harming the、uh, the white swans. 啊，要尽量减少这种行为，因为你。他们这个游客在投生的时候，他会把一些食品啥了，他都会投进去，有些并不适合鸟类。Uh -huh. So some foods actually is not suitable for these white swans. Like, can you talk about what foods actually that is very bad for these birds? But most visitors would feed these animals. 对对。有什么样的这个食物，就是一般游客他喂给了这个鸟，但是对他们其实有很大伤害的，但他们可能不知道。
那有时候那个你像游客带一些孩子拿一些食品啥了，像这一类的，你像他他有些东西像那牛肉干儿啦， uh -huh. 或者什么东西，他这个本身那边带的有那方佐料啥了，他、uh -huh. 本身对这个鸟类他也不是纯天然了吧？ Uh -huh. So some visitors actually would feed, especially children, they have no idea. They would feed these white swans with beef jerky, and that is definitely harmful to these birds, right? Okay. So what did you do here to protect these animals from being fed by some visitors? Okay, so it is uh, so usually now the visitors they have come to the realization that they are probably their activity is harming these birds. So now we have got some comments from our viewers around the world. So I have got a viewer from Bangkok, Thailand, the land of smiles, and also that is Bojan Mitrovic. So he said very brief words, thank you very much, and they love nature and the positive energy, that's why that's so peaceful, thank you Bojan. And we have got a comment from Marland Majors, the swans are beautiful. Yeah, of course, and if you like it, definitely come to the central Chinese city of Samanxia. It is known as the city of white swans. And I have got this one uh, from Bojan. Mitrovic, the third comment actually from you, thank you very much. So the birds do not know what border it is, they just fly up on the sky and go there where it is fine. I think that is right. They usually would come here in October every year and in thousands and they would leave this part of the China when it comes to early March. So they go back to Siberia or Mongolia. Definitely they don't know borders and they would cross over to any different countries wherever they like. That is called freedom, right? Okay. These birds, they actually come from the international border. Most of them are from Siberia and Mongolia, from a different country. They are from a different country. But if they come from a different country, they actually don't have any effect on the local people. Yes, they don't. Because it's the seasonal nature. It's just when they come and when they go. It's like this every year. So this is the way they come. 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 So this is the way they like the next year, it doesn't happen very often. And so the local government is doing whatever they can to prevent the bird flu from spreading in the country, actually, right? And then, so, now let's uh, go on talking about some other things about these birds. So that is very lovely. And then they will usually actually stay around this area. This 嗯，也去，因为我们这个整个湖就是按这个，就是非常适宜天鹅来给它设计，因为它这个湖水，它这个湖水不能过深，因为天鹅它不会潜水，就是它的头下去的时候，它的屁股会露到外边，就它这个深度，就它下去以后正好能够到湖底儿，能吃到水生植物。如果你水太深的时候，它就够不到底儿的时候，它就不会再来。That is very interesting, something that I just knew because actually these birds, most of them actually swim. In the water, but the thing is, they don't know how to dive. If they dive, and then their body, like the bottom, actually would just float on the water. And the need to make the water is not too deep; it is shallow, so that they could reach the bottom, so that they can get enough food. That is very interesting. So these birds actually are very different from other swans that I see in the European countries or in America. This, these birds, and Europe, and the other countries, the American countries, see these birds, they look very different, right? These birds have four types. Our type is the big bird. Okay. So there are altogether like four types, four kinds of birds. And this one, this particular one, is called bird swan. 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 Bird sw
。Big swan， 就 big white swan， 叫大天鹅。对，大天鹅，小天鹅。Small swans。UB 天鹅。OK。U B Tianer. That is some kind of what's it called? What's mute swans? Actually, most you could find them in Europe. Like mute swans is not because they're mute. This U B Tianer in English, it's called mute swans. Mute swans. The meaning is that they're like mute swans. Is this because they don't actually make any noise? Yeah. Usually in Europe, you can find kind of we call the mute swans different from the swans we can see here. Is this because they don't make any noise? Is it 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 because they don't make any noise? And then behind that, you can see the beak. The rest of the beak is yellow. And then for the、uh, mute swans, they have a large forehead. 它这个幽闭天鹅有个大的额头。对，它那个它那头上面长个疙瘩，油嘛，油就是咱这个你想从医学角度上讲，就跟那瘤子一样，所以它可得叫幽闭天鹅。Okay, that is the reason. In Chinese, we call it Yubi Swan, and that means it's only because of their look and their large forehead is very much like a wart. But in English, we call that mute swans. This is quite different. I don't think that is the that is the right translation actually between English and Chinese. So, and then we have play,、uh, big swans, the small swans, and we have the、uh, mute swans. And what's the、uh, the last one? 最后一个叫什么类的？最后还有一个那个黑天鹅嘛，就你刚才看到的那个。Okay. Uh -huh. So the last one we have black swans, and then so how about black swans? I don't see many of them actually. Here, but I see definitely some of them. You can see the black swan, two of them over there. 在那边能看到两个黑的天鹅哈。So how about? Ah, black swans and white swans. That is very interesting. Can they produce the next generation together? 他们是能产生后代吗？对。They can, but if they produce the next generation, their offspring would look different. It's gonna be white or black. Or gray. It is the offspring of the black swan. 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 它它孵化出就黑天鹅。Okay, so a black one and a white one are gonna have a black one. Then all of these ones actually should be black. 那样的话，所有的天鹅都应该是黑色的了。那它那个它那个出生以后的颜色基本上都差不多。嗯嗯。但是它长长长颜色就开始变。So black or white? 对对对，你不就这白的就慢慢变白，黑的就黑了。黑天鹅，如果这黑天鹅和这白天鹅，它们两个要生出来的孩子应该是什么颜色？那它不会。Uh, they they couldn't make babies. They are not born as children. Ah, you say you you say black swan and white swan. No, they won't. You just this this white is white, right? Ah, white is white. Okay. Ah, they won't make babies in this middle. This is different. That is interesting. A black swan and white swan actually they wouldn't they wouldn't produce the next generation. They wouldn't have any offspring. Is this? They won't produce any offspring. Is this? They won't produce any offspring. 那它这没有，因为它这个本身这个天鹅像它这一种，它本身就是它自己就是同类，它不会和其他的去繁殖。OK。嗯。So the white swans actually they will stay together, and then the black swans they will stay as a group. They're very different, right? That is interesting. OK, let's move on. So today is very cold actually. In central, in the central Chinese city of Shanghai, it's a freezing cold, and then seeing all of those birds actually swimming in the water, it makes me feel colder. And here you can see tons of visitors, and a lot of them actually are taking pictures here. And then they love. Most of them are actually very big fans of these swans. That is lovely. I would like to interview some of them, possibly. Okay. Uh huh. 这一家人就非常明显了，你看， okay. 这几只小子。That's a group and that's a family。对，你看，两只大，四只小。这个
pitch. That is interesting. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. So that's the family, two white ones, and you can also see three gray ones, or four gray ones, actually. That's the family, and they are protecting their own territory. And I know a white one, a white one over there, I think that's his father or a mother, is protecting this area. If there are some other swans approaching, and the, the, the swan would attack him or her. They are quite fierce. This Tianlu is really quite fierce. Yes. 他这个，他在这个这个抖的时候，或者在孵化的时候，他非常凶猛。The fierce animals, that is lovely. So I can see tons of visitors here. Actually, they would usually come here every year, thousands of them. And I would like to interview some of them. Very interesting. Very interesting. Hey, 你好。我们是中国国际电视台的，您每年都来这儿看天鹅吗？我第一次来。啊，第一次来。This is the first time for him to see those white swans. How do you feel? 这看到这些白天鹅什么样的感觉？嗯，第一次见，没见过。You have never seen those white swans here, right? But how do you know that you can find white swans here in Samanxia? 您怎么知道这边有白天鹅呢？我儿子在这儿住，我想过，嗯，这个。要不是说三门下这是，这个有有有这个这个天鹅嘛 ？OK， so your son lives here, and that is why you would come to see those white swans. So have you ever seen swans anywhere in the world? 你在其他地方见过白天鹅吗？在电视上见过。You only see white swans on TV,、oh, not in real life. 我其他地方没见过。And how do you feel? Do you find them lovely? 你感觉他们这些天鹅可爱吗？可爱吗？这是这个，我长这么大第一次见。Oh, you see like white swans in real life for the first time in your whole life. Wow, <laughs> that's like your first time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so now for those who just tuned in, this is CGTN. We are broadcasting live in the central Chinese city of Samanxia. This city is also. Known as the city of white swans, every year in October, swans would fly all the way from Siberia or Mongolia to this part of China, and then usually in early March, they would go back to Siberia or Mongolia, their hometown. But some of them actually would stay here. I just talked to Mr. Wan. Usually, around 50 or 60 of them actually would stay in the central Chinese city, especially when it injures, and then if they recover, they go back to their hometowns. Once again, and this is the、uh, real-time China CGTN is broadcasting live everywhere in China, culture-wise, food-wise, economy-wise, or politics, anything related. If you are interested, don't forget to give us a heart and also leave a comment down below. And I'm going to get back to your questions as soon as possible. And of course, if you are interested, and don't forget to share. The post with your friends, and I'm gonna see you next time. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.